I decided to change my video a little bit um, from what I normally do and I have already started my video um, like I normally would but I'm adding this to the beginning so that I can explain to you what my video is a little bit about. First of all I'm going to be making this card and one of the things um, I didn't end up doing is showing the finished card at the end because I usually show it in a picture at the beginning which I still will do but I did want to tell you that I ended up using this um, particular um, product from Lisa Horton because I needed to use um, a sentiment and I ended up using this one and that's what it ended up being on the card but I also wanted to tell you that this video has two segments to it where I stopped and started. Um, I will show you how to make this 3D um, embossing and stenciling. And then the second part of the video will show you how I made the background and turned it into a card. So I just wanted to let you know what the video is about and why there are stops and starts in it. Thanks so much. Hello, this is Bonnie, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different for my channel, and I'm going to be using Lisa Horton Crafts um, Layering Stencils and 3D um, Embossing Folder. Um, this is a newer release. Um, this one's called um, Flora Bunda Vase. I don't know if I said that right, but um, it's really, really, really a cute, cute, um, really pretty. Um, design I wanted to tell you um, it's it doesn't say on this um, packaging but it does on the, um, the 3d folder that's an a6 and I'm not really sure what an a6 is but I can show you the um, stencils and so um, I made sure I had paper that was at least six inches long and about um, four and a half inches wide so um, just to let you know so let me um, back up and tell you a little bit more. I really, really like this. I think it's really pretty. And uh, this is the layering stencils. And in this case, um, I don't know why I must have gotten caught. I did. And I would say missing number one. Um, that's number one. And how you can tell um, what all of these, um, you can kind of see that right there. I think you can. Um, they're in, engraved. The numbers are at the top and a lot of people will go through with a permanent marker and write these so they can actually see them to make sure they go in order. I kind of sometimes don't always go in order depending on what I'm going to be doing but in this case there happens to be six different stencils. Now if you consider stencils in themselves usually you end up paying like I don't know roughly like six dollars for one and you get this entire set for about twenty dollars. So that's really a pretty reasonable deal. Um, it just depends on where you're buying them from. So I'm really excited about these to get going. And then if you want to, um, you can just leave your stenciling like, like it is from the packaging um, and just have that design on your card and be done with it. It's really, really pretty. Or you can um, also get this 3D embossing folder. It also comes, I cut the top of mine so I can get into that. It also comes with a die. Um, when you get done stenciling and then you cut that out and then you can emboss it. It's it's just really really a fun um, Project and it's just really pretty when you get done. So I'm really excited about this So I want to go ahead and get started. I have started collecting some of Lisa's um, Ink and this is called cloud nine and I'm still getting used to the colors in terms of how things go together So I'm still new at that and um, so the other thing I'm going to do though today, instead of just using plain paper, I'm going to use some of my digital paper that I made and I'm just going to line that up on this. It's called um, the Ultimate and it really is a game changer for um, doing stenciling um, because when you, if you notice there's these um, holes on the side, well there's pegs over here. And so as you're going, you just set this down and it stays. You don't have to tape anything down. Um, if you don't want to, you don't need to tape anything down. The only thing that could ever really happen is if, and even still look, you really can't really move this around a lot, but um, depending on how you push and how you do your stenciling, it is really a great design when you're done. So that's how you start. And what I do actually for my paper 
is I go ahead, just so that my paper doesn't move, is I do use washi tape a little bit on the corners. And you can see this paper is plenty big anyway. I really didn't um, need to have a six by six um, piece of paper in here. So one of the things I have learned um, and how you're building um, stenciling is that this is kind of like your background layer. So you have to think that way um, when you go to um, decide in what color inks you want. And when you look at this, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, the outline in here is light. If you don't want your outline light, then your first color you put on should be a little bit darker, but then you have to remember whatever color you put on top of your light color, right, or your dark color it has to mat match up with this. You'll see what, I'm, what I mean as we're going. So there's a couple things you just have to think about, and it depends on what you want. So I pulled out some of the ones, like I said, I'm starting to get kind of excited. Um, I think, and I'm gonna show you some of these. I've got, this one's Antique Pink and Dusty, Dusky Rose. And I want to show you, I still think in terms of Tim Holtz, and that's kind of my problem when I go to use something new. Um, so you can see the colors are really, really pretty. And I don't wanna get these messed up. Cause like I said, I'm still not really, really good at remembering all these, but I do know I want to do the, the background colored um, at the edges for sure, a little bit darker. So this one happens to be rhubarb jam. I'm not trying to sound like I don't know, you know, what I'm doing, but I want you to understand just like if you were a beginner, how you would have to think through these things. So I have some, um, of these brushes that I'm going to go ahead and use. And, um, from the picture, these are the flowers and this is the flower bud at the top and the, the main flower arrangement in the center. And then if you notice down here at the, bo the bottom, that happens to be the band. And the band can be any color you want it to be. It doesn't have to be what's on the color here, but it just gives you an idea of what's what when you're going to do it. So in this case, I'm gonna get my, have a little hair there, okay. I'm gonna use a little bit, again, like I said, of rhubarb jam. And I'm just gonna come in here um, at the side. If you go straight on, you are gonna get it dark, but I'm okay with that to start. So I kind of think of it as, um, also I use my Copic coloring pencil techniques when I go to um, <clears throat> color, even my um, stenciling. <clears throat> so the edges for me, um, I want them to be a little bit darker don't have to be that way, but it's just like kind of like how I want them to be. I'm trying to make it so the natural light gets on here a little bit better without my hand. Um, I think you can see. Without my hand um, blocking the light. Now again, I'm gonna take another peek and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. There are several flowers on here. You can see, eventually I could even come back in once I find out where that is and make that a little bit darker for the shading. And you could also use, which if you watch, which you should really watch, it's really good for learning. Um, Lisa Horton has her design team and she also gets on every Friday. Um, they have somebody on, I remember, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And then Lisa's on Friday on her channel, Lisa Horton's channel. And they have tutorials every single week. And it's really good for learning the new and old, um, older products. You can go in there and find out. That's how I started learning about how they, you know, created with their products. So that's kind of like what I do to start. And then I come back in very softly. Okay, I'll put some here. And bring that into the center because I do want some color in there, but I just don't want it to be as dark. So kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Dark on the outside, lighter on the inside. And again, I'm gonna change that out a little bit as I get my pieces on here, where I'm gonna put shading. But I just want that overall color. 
And then up here, I'm just gonna go around the outside. But down below, I'm not gonna do the band yet because I think I'm gonna have it be gold, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just gonna save this for later, the band at the bottom of the vase. So that's what we have. And you can see how that looks. Now, um, this ink is also, uh, I'm gonna make sure I have this right. This ink is also um, water um, based. If that's right, I don't know if I said that right. So anyway, um, water will affect whatever you do with this. It's not uh, any different in that regard because it's, um, yeah, it's a dye. So anyway, the next color I'm going to go ahead and use, let me see, I gotta see what my um, stencil is. Now this is what I'm talking to you about. So the parts right now that aren't going to be stenciled is what's um, underneath there. So I know that eventually I'm going to have to make that a little bit darker, and I can do that even right now, but even underneath I could. So I'm going to go ahead and get that rhubarb jam again, and then come back in with some of those other colors. But first what I'm going to do, actually I need a smaller brush. I think I'm going to use this one. Okay, again, rhubarb jam. And I can see where that shading would be. You know, I'm doing this a little bit more detailed than what you have to. It's just kind of like what I, I try to like color. And again, like I said, I need to remember to use the stencil as my palette. So again, like here in the center, And if you use a smaller brush, you're able to get a little bit more of that detail. I want the center here to be a little bit darker. This is another flower here, that's the center. And I'm probably gonna come in with even a darker color. I can see that already. And then what you do is as you're going, you just lift it up and you say, okay, I know I need something more there. See, and I'm actually literally going on top of that st the stencil that's not showing because I can get my edging in there. Okay, let's just take a look. You can kind of see that it's still light underneath like I told you, but I know I need some more of this dark. So I'm a little bit more fussy instead of just making it a solid color. I'm not saying more fussy than anybody else. I'm just saying I am a little bit more fussy. All right. That's starting to come along the way I want it. But now I'm gonna add a different color. I wanna see what happens. And I'm going to use the dusky rose. And I'm actually not going to take anything off of this. I'm going to keep this on. And I'm just going to try the dusky rose. Yeah, see, now that's going to be a little bit... That's still dark. And that's okay, because I can come back in with a darker color. Because I do want the contrast. And that's how you kind of like figure as you're going is you look at it and go, hmm, I want the contrast, where do I put it? So I'm gonna come back in. See, you can see that's starting to come there. But I'm gonna come back in with a darker color. I do like this color, this dusky, uh, what did I say, rose? Yeah, it's really pretty. All right, still I'm gonna come in with a darker color yet. And the darker color I have, I think that's even darker, is this rum and raisin. And I am gonna use a different, because I do have a darker. Yeah. So again, this little bit around here in the center. And a little bit here. 
it down here. And I mean, quite frankly, I know um, the DT can really um, do their tutorials within an hour. It takes me longer um, to actually really do it when I'm doing it. And I enjoy it. It's really fun. Okay, let's take a look and see if that gave me a little bit of the darker centers. It did. I know I want a little bit darker on the edges. I like the contrast. And again, the thing is, I'm still really, really used to um, using Tim Holtz's um, Distress Oxides, um, which I don't think there's anything wrong with using those. So I'm learning on the color and the shading of Lisa's inks. And they really offer, uh, Lisa's inks offer a bigger variety for you, even if you combine the two. Um, it just gives you um, even more um, ways to be creative. Okay, let's just take a peek. Yeah, I like that there's a little bit, I see a little bit of a dot I wanna blend out better. And take a peek. So you would you could just come in here and do a couple colors and you can be done and not be as fussy as I am. I see one spot. Let's take a peek. That kind of like gives me a variety of what I want. I really like that. So I think what I am gonna do for the very bottom, I was I was thinking of doing gold. You know, this is number one. You can go back. I think I'm gonna do this. I like this um, darker um, rum raisin for what I'm thinking of doing. So I'm gonna come in at the sides of that band with the rum raisin. Cause that's the darkest color and I really like that. And then I'm gonna come in with, um, I'm gonna use the um, dusky pink. I think that works just in the center. Now I'm gonna blend them together. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I really like that. That works good. All right, so we've got, I think everything done with the pink. So we can move that out of our way and continue on. So the next one that's coming up is going to be the vase base. Now I really like my background paper um, to give that a little bit of texture, but I went ahead and pulled out um, Almond Frosting and Dolphin Gray, because that's what I have. And um, they're both, um, one's a grayish brown and the other one is, is like a tan. I wanted to have a little bit more of a rustic look. And I am gonna be adding um, gold um, wax to it. So um, in the end, so that works too. So I'm gonna start with the light just to see. And the latest one, like I said, is Almond Frosting that I have. And again, I'm gonna come around the sides. And I should have put it on here first and I didn't. And, I, and here's, a, here's a deal, do you see this right here? This is movable. When they're movable like that, you have to be really careful when you go to um, stencil around them. You don't want to push hard. Um, you want to actually do it softly so they don't move because you want that to be more, um, it'll be like a shadow. When you finally put the green on there, it'll, it'll have a shadow. And if you move it around a lot, mm, it won't be so cool. It won't be bad though. So I just try to be careful knowing that those little pieces move. And you can see there's some spots up there in the flowers and those are supposed to be, we'll take a peek, but I have a feeling those are the center of the flowers. I don't know that I want the brown to be the center of my flowers. So we'll think about that a minute because I haven't done this, I haven't prepared, so you're seeing it just like how it would be if you would do it, do it for the first time, not 
having any instruction. So I'm making it dark on the outside and then I'm coming in and blending that into the center but to still keep it a little bit light to keep my um, digital paper still showing for that texture. get the base and then we're going to take a peek at those pieces up above to see I think they're the centers on some of those I think and I don't think I want them to be brown let's take a peek yeah I don't think I want them to be let's take a peek let's just try the edges Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm, I mean, I'm gonna do a little bit, but I think I'm gonna add color to those. They need color. And on the packaging, it just shows it to be darker, a darker pink. Um, and I can do that and that works. So I wanna finish with the brown first. And the next one would be um, Dolphin Gray. And I'm coming in back what I was just doing, but that's giving it even a little bit darker. But I also, like I said, I really wanna get this antique rusty look eventually. And I don't wanna move that leaf. But I, I'm using the Dolphin Gray as my shadow. And then, like I said, I'm going to come back in there with the almond frosting. A little bit of shadow there. All right, so back with the almond frosting. And we'll bring that closer to the center. And I don't mind that I'm using the same brush because it actually helps me blend the um, almond frosting with the dolphin gray. All right, let's take a look. Yep, and then if I, once I do that and it's raised, I'm gonna use my gold wax. That will really look good on that. Okay, so for those centers, I'm just gonna pull back out the um, rum and raisin. I think that'll be perfect. And a little bit of brown with it. A little bit of the almond frosting, which I don't, which just makes it a different color altogether anyway. But I think that works. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of like that works really good, I think. So our next layer is number four, and this is going to be predominantly the leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and move the rum raisin out of the way. So I know what I'm doing here. And looking at this, there's they have, you know, Lisa has two different color leaves. Now the good thing is, is I actually purchased woodland moss and eucalyptus leaves. And I really like this. It has more of the yellow tones and this one has more of the blue tones. So it works really good. But what you need to know is, I'll just pull that out for you. The, the, next, um, the next stencil is gonna be yet another color. So I have to sit there and ask myself the question, um, knowing that, you know, do I want the different color leaves and use different color inks for each one? Not sure. But I think what I'm gonna do for sure is I'm gonna start out with um, the darker color, which is the um, eucalyptus leaves, and that's gonna go on the bottom of all of these leaves. I do know that's what I wanna do. So again, it's like I'm coloring, thinking of it in, in terms of shading. If you wanna see what I mean, I'll pick it up. See? 
Okay, and I think this color, like I said, the more colors you get, the more you can be creative. Or you can even, um, I know you can blend them and make different colors. But when you only have so many to start with, that's what you use. Unless, like I said, you add a little bit of Tim Holtz with your stash until you get what you want from Lisa. I knew this was going to take a little while to go ahead and stencil, but even though it's small, I wanted you to actually see it in real time. And even after I do this, I lots of times I'll bring the stencil back in and add more after I see what it looks like with the other color. I hope you can see that well. All right, so we're gonna take a peek. Yep, so I can actually add more color. I just, like I said, I just might end up adding more of the color after I put the next color on. It doesn't really matter. All right, so I'll leave that lid off and pull out woodland moss. You can see these colors really good on here, what I'm talking about. They're really pretty. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the same brush again because to me, if it blends with it, it just helps blending the whole color. But in this case, I'm gonna start from the tip and go in. But again, you have to be careful. Always watch your stencils to make sure they're not gonna flip up on you when you do that. These blend really well together. You also have to remember, I know um, in all these stencils, Lisa usually has veining for her um, flowers and her, um, I'm sure that's, yep, and that's the last one. So you have to keep that in mind too, what color you're gonna use, which is why um, it also is helpful if you want to have different colors, because I know people have done them all in the same color and they look really pretty, but if you want to have um, different levels of color, um, you need to consider, like, I've got two greens. I, I know I'm gonna need to get a third if I want to do that. I do have, like I said, the Tim Holtz to always have my standbys. All right, let's take a peek. I think that's really pretty. So our next one is the next set of leaves. And I do think I wanna have a little bit of a variety there and they are gonna be darker. Hmm, so let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the eucalyptus leaves, trying to really, really stay with Lisa's colors. Let's take a look. That's giving us a variety. And the thing of it is too, is you can make it darker just by adding more ink. So that even gives you really your variety. And these pieces are relatively small, so. That's why these brushes, the smaller head brushes work really well for these areas if you want to be um, just using, like say you want a shade and you want a different color and you don't want as much ink on it, the little brushes are really good. Okay then, let's check that out. Yeah, I like the variety, that's really pretty. It's just, it's just a really, really pretty design. Okay, and this is our last one. We're we'll gonna go ahead and take a look at that. And as I said, there's um, some in the flowers, some in the leaves. 
And I think what I'm going to do, so you can look and see these are flowers. I'm going to call that shading. And because of that, I am going to go ahead and use, um, I think I just put it away, um, Dolphin Gray. I think that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to try to look for my brush. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure it's not going to be too dark. I don't think so, because I think the... Um, I can always try almond frosting. We'll do that first. We'll try almond frosting, and if it is too light, we just go to the next darker color. Check it out. Yeah, you can't even see it. So, it, it, because of what it's on, too. So let's go with the um, dolphin gray. That should show up. I can see it. Yep, that's what I like. That's going to work. We'll be light-handed on the flowers just to check it out. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. I'm just not going to be as heavy-handed on the flowers. Yep, that works. Not as heavy-handed. So, um, the next step is going to be die-cutting this out. And I can show you how that works. And then I'll run it through my machine and I'll show you how I'll do that. If you, It's going to be a longer video if you want to see this. And it's really how long it takes. And again, it can be, you can take your time and it could even be, take a little bit longer. Okay. So that's your finish. Again, if you wanted different colors, you wanted a lighter pink, whatever, it's what you have in your stash to use. And that's how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and show you how, well, actually, I'm going to leave it right here so you can see how the um, die goes on there. Um, it comes in a little package like this. And basically what you do is you just go ahead and line that up. And um, is it key for how you emboss your, um, your, your with your folder? Yeah, it could be. So I'm gonna have, actually this will work really, really well because um, if I really want to use this card base, all I have to do is um, I could actually put this on top of a card uh, mat, actually, and put it right back on here if I wanted to. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what it ends up looking like when you've die cut it. And again, because I use the digital paper in the background, it's got a little bit of the lines, but that's just, I kind of like that look, so I'm okay with that. Um, I wanted to tell you about, I just learned a specific way to know. I usually just felt it, but um, one of the DT said how you can usually tell is if you look at your folder, okay? This side is thinner, this side is thicker. Plus it has to fit a certain way no matter what you do anyhow to know which way it goes. But just in case you have a die that, or a folder rather, that can go, um, the design is, um, what I wanna say, all over and you can't really tell. Um, just always remember the thicker part is up. Um, but in, the, in this case, like I said, it doesn't really matter, it has to match up. So what they try to do is find a place that they know is matching up. And once they get, um, one little section matched up to the way they want it, they go ahead and work on the other section with keeping that steady. So, um, actually, I actually like using the main focus to get that first if I can, and then I like to move it. So that's, that's the way that's supposed to be. And that looks pretty good. So then how do you keep that in place? Well, basically I close it and hold it and then I run it through my die cutting machine. What I actually use is a Big Shot. 
And I want to show you really quickly. Pull that over here for you. Everybody, you make you just have to make sure whatever you use is what your sandwich calls for. In this case, this is the main plate, right? I don't even know if there's a number for it um, or a letter. And then I have this thin die adapter for me. This is what works. And then I put this down on top of this. And then I use this for my sandwich, just one plate. So whether or not that's correct, that works for me every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and be right back. Okay, so I've got that done and I wanna show you what that looks like when you open this up. I don't know if you can see the depth of that, but it's really cool. And then again, even the backside, I mean, come on. That's just super cool. So that's gonna be on my card front. And I believe I am gonna do what I told you, is I am gonna go ahead and still use this piece of paper I cut it out on, but um, basically I'm probably gonna put like a piece of paper here. I'm not sure yet, I'm thinking about it. But I wanted you to see how simply you can make a beautiful design for your cards and you could put them, I don't know, these are even pretty framed. Um, I'm just saying, so. I'm gonna go ahead and make um, a card base for it, and I will show you what that looks like in the end. I forgot one thing I wanted to show you, which was kind of important to me. I had told you how I wanted this to look a little bit more vintage. Um, I have this product from Sizzix called Luster Wax, and this one happens to be rose gold. I'm pretty sure I don't see where it's at, but I know it's rose gold. Yeah, there we go, uh, rose gold. And, um, Actually, this stuff smells good, and usually it doesn't have a smell, and I really like this. So, this is what it looks like, and um, all I do is I put a little bit on my finger, and I don't like getting it all over everything, and this is raised up a little bit, so, and it's, it's not as controllable as I wish that it could be, but it still works. So, I'm going to have a little bit off to the side, and you see... It's gonna come in there and have a completely different look now, but it even highlights the flowers. It just depends on how much you put on your finger. But I wanted it to have, like I told you, a little bit more of a vintage. -y. And it, once you get it on there, there's not a whole lot of moving it around. Okay, so then what you other can do, also do, is very lightly you can go over the top of all of this if you wanted to and give it even a more, whoops, glossy look. It also um, can take away some of those, you know, edges. But it does even bring out the um, embossing part, part even more. So you saw the other look. So if you don't like the antique embossing, or not really the antiquing wax look, then you just don't go that route. But I wanted you to see I do do this too. I think I need the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. It does have a little bit of a, a glimmer to it. Shine. I think I need a little bit more. Okay. 
has a little bit more of the glimmerish. Like I said, I wanted to have that little bit of a rustic, goldy look to it. So, okay. Okay, this is Bonnie, and um, I created this video showing you how to make this beautiful vase from Lisa Horton. And I am going to be making a background. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what you can do. And if that work doesn't work out, I'm just going to make a, a plain background, I'm not using this cutout. So this is my plan. I'm going to reverse this because what I want to use is Lisa Horton's, this is called Mini Blooms, Lily of the Valley background. This is an absolute gorgeous stencil and 3D folder. Beautiful for any backgrounds. You don't even need to, you don't have to use the stencil. This is just absolutely gorgeous on its own. Um, but I really want to use a little bit of color. Usually I like to do subtle, but I'm gonna do a little bit of color to go with what I made the vase, um, when I made the vase. So I am lining this up and I flipped it because I know I if I'm going to use a 3D folder, I'm gonna use it on this side because I think this side is gonna be pretty much covered up with um, an oval um, that I'll probably use. So, um, I, so that I don't get a lot of ink on my background there, I'm gonna put this piece of paper behind and then I'm gonna go ahead and tape these down just to kind of secure it a little bit in place. And then I'm gonna start with stencil number one. And I've used this stencil before and I haven't cleaned it. So, cause I was planning on using it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use um, a lot of the same colors I used when I made the um, um, flower floral bundle or bundle. I always say that wrong. But anyway, when I use this. So um, I've left out my inks. This is almond frosting. And as you can see, there's a lot of little bits on here. That would technically be the green. I kind of liked the brown um, to go with this to make it a little bit more neutral. And so I'm going to be using the almond. Now, um, this is going to be really, really, really subtle. And oh, one other thing, I'm doing it upside down. But again, if um, upside down in terms of this is the layering stencil and the direction it goes, um, I'm using it on the other side. It's because it's an all over print. It could really be used in any direction. At least that's what I'm kind of looking at it as. Um, and there's a lot of little bits on this first stencil. And I am totally avoiding the white part if I can. Um, there's no reason to put my ink on that and waste it. And I'm not using the big brush, um, blending brush, because these pieces are so small. And again, if I want to continue to this other side over here for any reason, I probably can. Uh, it's just that the um, 3D embossing folder also isn't as big as that. That's why I'm pretty much going to cover up this other side with a an oval or something. So uh, let's see here. It's not really going to show. So you can hardly see really anything on there right now. I should come up just a little bit, but I think that's good. All right, so now we're gonna go through a lot of stencils. This actually has, let me see here, six. This one also has six. And um, there's a lot of dots, but I really love this stencil too. So um, if you look at the folder, again, you can start to see what these are. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use, because I use the pink, um, I'm going to use the lightest of the pinks and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the lighter pink was the antique and the dusty rose. Dusky rose. Those are the two I think I'm going to use. And looking at this, I'm trying to see kind of like what it did, kind of a little bit on here. Um, the lighter color really comes later. Let's see the dots. 
I'm looking to see what these dots all are. Okay, they kind of look like uh, green, a lot of the green, but we're going to go with, um, I'm going to go with the pink. I'm going to go with, actually, you know what? I have another one I really, really like. This is the subtle one. We are going to go with Straw Hat. Just looking at this together, Straw Hat's it. So, I'm going to have to pull out a different brush, and this will work. I When I got almond, or Straw Hat, rather, I was thinking that it was going to be like a yellow, and it's really flush. It's, I mean, and um, a flush color, skin, light skin color. So this is not gonna show up um, a lot, a lot, but it's gonna have a little bit of the shading. And again, I think it looks like the green, this is more of a green when you go to do, um, if you look at the cover. But I'm using the, the larger brush to do this. And if you think it's too light, uh, go over it twice or three times. And it probably wouldn't if you weren't, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm using this digital paper for a background. Uh, if I was probably on white, good chance that um, it would show up better. Keep on moving. We'll take a peek. It's showing up. It's very subtle, but I love subtle pink. And I'm hoping I can get as much as I can done because I'm going to have to get my grandson off the bus. So that looks really pretty good. Alrighty, so now the next color we're gonna go, like I said, with the um, Dusky Rose. Nope, this is, um, I'll make sure I'm right, Antique Pink. So this one's gonna show a lot more. And like I said, if it turns out to be uh, too busy for a background, I'm going to just use it for another card. So it's not a waste of time. That's what I figured. And if it's too busy, I'm just going to make the other one more of a, a neutral color and use that for my background. And you could just see I'm just, I'm not doing shading. I'm just coloring this one fast. And I'm trying to beat my alarm that I have set on my Echo. So you don't hear her telling me that my alarm's going off. I might have to stop. So I'm trying to beat the clock. Okay, I think we got that one. That's layer number, see, is this is number three. You have to look in different places for this one because I couldn't put the three here because there wasn't room. So then we've got number four, and this is when I'm going to be using Dusky Rose. I don't think it's gonna be too dark, but even tested over here because I know by testing it over here, it might be covered up with my oval. Some of this you can see is supposed to be green. And I might come in and do that. So it's probably, I won't probably get this all done. I'll have to come back after I pick, get my grandson. So I'm gonna keep some of those that look like um, leaves and make them green. Let's take a peek. Yeah, it's pretty. Or I'm gonna, you know what? I think I'm gonna use a darker brown on those. Oh, 
Okay, I think I'm just going to be able to do this little bit of pink, and we're going to have to stop, and I'll be right back. Oops, got a lot of pink on that one. That's okay. Oops. I'm trying to see, there's just this little bit of wiggly ones that look like leaves. And I think I'm gonna do those with the almond frosting. Time to get that little bit of Roman frosting on there. Alrighty. Where's the other one? There's a couple. Okay. Let's take a peek. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'll be back in just a bit to do the rest. Okay, so I'm back and looking at this, I know what I'm gonna do with this other part. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the um, antique pink for the parts that I have not inked up yet. The parts that I see that are going to be, um, I wanna say highlighting the petals I am going to go in and use the um, dusky rose on them again and make it a little bit um, darker by giving a little bit more um, ink layers. And I've also thought about what I'm going to be doing to this side right here. I have decided I am going to be cutting this off and I'm going to be putting an oval on it, but it's going to be kind of like an open card. I think it'll make sense. So I'm not even going to be bothered with this part over here at all. It's going to totally be cut off. And the reason for that is because the 3D embossing folder isn't wide enough to do a six inch card. So that's what we're going to do. Or what I'm going to do. All right, so I need to go back in, like I said, and all the parts that are dark that I can see, I need to add the dusky rose. So I think that's working. So yeah, just the parts that are already dark. And I'll show you what that does. I think it'll make sense. Oops, that one should have been the lighter color. I'll come back in. There's a couple I can see that I missed. Okay. All right, so what I need do, 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 is the, what did I do? Antique pink. Right, so there's a couple spots here that I missed. This is gonna be a combination. This one up here, I missed. I missed this one. I think that looks good. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So you see what I'm saying? I just kind of like um, shadowed it, so it made it look really good. So we have one one left to do, and um, you'll see what I need to do with this. I just need to use that. Um, I can use the dusky rose. Or I could come back in so I have a variety. I think I'm going to come back in with a variety. So I'm not going to use the Dusky Rose. I'm going to use the Antique Pink on all of these. It has a little bit of Dusky Rose still in the brush. And I'm getting every one of these. And 
And then the next thing I need to show you is this is a little bit different. It does not have a die. Um, you know, the other one I used, there was a die for it. This one does not have a die. This one is just the embossing folder. So that should be it. So I think that's really pretty. Let me take that off and show you. I think it's gonna work okay. And like I said, it doesn't really matter with this design going this direction. I don't think it does. See? Um, so anyway, so like I said, I'm gonna cut this so it doesn't really matter, but I need the embossing folder and to show you what I'm gonna do. Again, this is like I told you, one of the ones that's an all over print. So um, when you go to put this in, again, like I said, the thicker part goes up and you can really see and feel the difference. But the other thing is, is that honestly, this is raised and this is indented. So you know the indented part always comes up. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that lined up. And I think that I might be, I think I did this one the other way around, so we gotta go upside down because that's exactly the way I did it, is upside down. So we need to find those. You have to do it the way that you inked it up. And your other problem can always be is if your paper at this end is longer than where your fold is, but I don't seem to think that's my problem. I don't think. But there's a little bit more to try to manage in this one. We can get it though. I'm using that really big one there. I use this one right there, that really big one. And then it all looks like it's lined up. Again, like I said, hopefully my paper's not, nope. I think that's, well, let's see. Nope. It is, you just take your time and you'll get that to line up. You can see how that's lined up with all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that through the um, die cutting machine. Well, I took it out before I could show you, <laughs> but you can actually see, look how pretty that is. It's really, really pretty. Even if it's off just a little bit, it's still really pretty. Um, I don't know how to, it's just pretty. So again, I'm gonna use another piece of this paper and make that probably an oval right here and then set this on it. Um, yeah, um, I should have done it this way in terms of making it a card, but I think it'll still work if I just cut this um, right here and put that oval to the side and then my fold will be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that together to show you how that's gonna work. Okay, so to make the rest of the card, um, my sun is going down so I'm losing the light. Um, I am going to be making this card using the same digital paper, turn this light on, maybe that'll help, using the same digital paper that I did for when I did the um, embossing, or not embossing, the um, stenciling. And this is roughly about um, six and a half by five inches. And um, it can really be any size. And then I also pulled this back out and I cut out an oval. And what I want to do is ink that up just a tad bit and I'm going to be using straw hat. So um, this is very subtle. I don't know if it's gonna give me much of any color, but I think it's working. Yep, I can see it. It's really quite pretty. But it's just really subtle, so it's not really a really um, bright white behind what I'm doing. Just gonna just take a little bit of time. I think I'm wiggling because I'm going too fast. Okay. All right, so that's gonna be, whoops, I need a little bit more at the top there. Okay, I think I'm gonna shut my curtain so I don't have that two different tone light. There we go. All right, so 
then we're gonna go ahead and pull out these other pieces. If you recall, this is the piece we started and I put double-sided tape on the back and I'm gonna line that up on top of this. So it kind of really blends in. And we have that cut out piece right there and I did cut off that one section. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on top of that to cover that up. It's gonna come all the way over to that side to cover that up. And to do that, I did cut out some of the double-sided tape. I'm also uh, trying to get this video done quickly because I have low um, battery. So I'm trying to do it quickly. Seems like today I have a lot of things going on. All right. So that will work, I think, for the background for right now. And like I said, this makes such a pretty um, background, even you know without stenciling it. I just love it. Um, I, you will probably see it on a lot of my cards. Okay. All right. And again, like I said, I think this is an all over print, so it really kind of like goes anywhere. I think I can do that, cover that all up. Okay, and then I also have what we did earlier by coloring this in. And that fits really nicely on there. I am gonna probably add a sentiment and I'll take a picture of that as well. But I just wanted to show you how pretty you can make that and just combine those together, even though this is a different, from a different collection, it's still Lisa Horton, and I think it's really beautiful. So I just wanna say, um, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to tell you. There was somebody that had asked about using um, Tim Holtz's um, storage tin, and until you can get you know the Lisa Horton ones, I just wanted to show you. I do have mine stored in here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I do have them stored and then I, I keep them standing up like this so the lid stays shut. But I know Lisa's making some for her um, inks as well. So I just wanna say thank you for stopping by um, and um, maybe I'll make another video um, soon using Lisa's stuff. Thanks so much.